What's happening guys? So we are now day two of working on my clapped out piece of junk now. So I got a little bit of work done yesterday. Let me first take you for a little walk and show you the parts that I took off today. So given that I don't think I'll actually be able to go through insurance for this, all the damage and everything is going to be out of pocket. So I think the best way to get back into like, let's call it a clean Z is to sell this one and then find another one. So with that being said, I removed the stock Grady Evo GT cat back strut bar, some of the interior and hood like front area pieces. I picked up a stock cat back exhaust system. I found a $350 set of Nissan 350Z wheels that will clear the brakes. Came with tires. They're not great, but it'll do. It'll get the car rolling and everything. Um, I'm not gonna be parting ways with the car with the GTs, obviously. Um, here's the car. Here's Trixie. Trixie, say hi. Nope, can't be bothered. <laughs> Um, but what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be taking a bunch more stuff off the car, but I'm also going to be taking a lot of stuff off the front of the car. So the deer hit this side of the vehicle here, went across that way. There's a little bit of like deer guts or fat and hair and all this stuff. This is all going to be coming off because what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these parts off the car, all the front end damaged components. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to sell this thing as a rolling shell or if I'm going to be selling this thing as a fixed vehicle with an accident on it. I'm not entirely sure yet. There's still a bunch of aftermarket parts to take off, but a lot of the front stuff has to come off. Now I got to be careful because I don't want to cut myself. I don't want to make the damage any worse or anything. And I don't want to get deer guts on me. So I'm sorry guys, if you see a little bit of guts or anything, but it's not pretty, there's not really much I can do about it, but it's here. So let me just get it right out of the way. No, not even close. That's not happening. <laughs> So this is the car. I already took off some of the plastic pieces here. The intake piece here, you can see that that's not exactly going to work properly. Radiator, AC condenser, the front radiator support. Some of the coolant lines got clipped. This here is another one of them. So that's got to go. Now at the same time, mechanically, the damage hasn't gotten to the engine. So it's literally just like the front fans and all that stuff. Maybe a serpentine belt, maybe, you know, a couple of like front accessory parts. But the engine itself, the drivetrain, the suspension, the wheels, the tires, it's all good. Pretty much every video that you guys saw about the Z that's been on this channel, all those mods that went on, they all have to come off. So, I have a lot of work ahead of me. I just wanted to give you guys an update or, you know, bring you guys along for what's happening. Yeah, it's not gonna be a fun journey, but it's a journey nonetheless. <laughs> Okay, so with all of these plastic and steel broken parts off of the car, it kind of gives us a little bit of an idea as to what's actually happening here. The loom seems to be cut in a couple places. Some of the connectors were, were literally ripped right off. As for the intake, I think at this point here, the intake from this coupler right here, from here down needs to come off. Same with the filters on both sides so that I can remove some of these other plastic pieces for the entire radiator support. Now, there was a bunch of like goop and stuff in here. I think this here is where the deer actually got the worst of it because I didn't seem to find any blood or fat or anything on this side. It's literally just a little bit of hair here and there. So I want to see maybe if we can remove the entire radiator and AC condenser without causing any more damage. Okay, so good news and bad news. 
good news is the engine's okay. The damage that you guys did see here was pretty much all rad. It was plastic pieces here. It seems like something pushed up against the engine and it seems like it shifted the serpentine belt. So the engine should be okay. I think it just means that we need to, you know, uh, take the tension off of this, replace the belt, and then mechanically the engine should be fine. So Luca and I were kidding around after basically getting the car to this extent. Luca was saying that, well, pretty much if we find shit, that'd be fine. Yeah. Guess what we found. <laughs> what is, what is that little, little thing right there in the center? The little turd? That's a poo! <laughs> <laughs> what's happening guys so this is now the end of day three so we had a pretty big thunderstorm here earlier today so i couldn't really record much um but at the evening today i got a lot of work done so i got all the suspension off of the z so everything from adjustable fortunato coilovers with our swift springs spl front upper control arms that's the front setup in the rear we have the rear shocks obviously matching the fortunato coilovers um, I'm running a, what am I running? 14K up front, 6K in the rear, true rear. Full SPL rear control arms, right si or left side, right side, other shock with spring. And in addition to that, I also have removed both of the sway bars. So front sway bar, hold on, which one's front? This one's front, front sway bar with the billet bushings or billet brackets, polyurethane bushings, same thing for the rear. Now I need to take off um, headers, engine mounts, transmission mounts, rear subframe collars. Those are all from Z1, very good parts. They really made a big difference um, once I installed them on the car. Um, I made videos for you guys installing all that stuff. The removal, it's not gonna be that complicated, but um, that is the stuff I believe that's everything that I need to do on the outside of the car. After that, we can get started with working on the inside. So I have the 370Z Nismo, the V2 uh, steering wheel to take out. I have the Nifty City module for the head unit. That allows you to use Apple CarPlay and integrate your phone or Android phone into the, the LCD screen. It wasn't too hard of an install, but I have to take it apart, obviously. Take it all out to remove it. Um, I need to remove the airbag, the deployed airbag on the driver's side to remove the steering wheel. So the steering wheel will still be good. I'll be able to revert back to my old Touring Sport one and then I'll be able to sell this or keep it maybe for the next Z if I end up getting another one. Now, as for the dash, the dash is not really much I can do. What you see is what you get. In order to fix this, um, you'll have to do one of two things. So you'll either need to completely remove the dash if you want to go full race car, or buy a new airbag and a full new dash piece to replace because this here pretty much cuts through the dash when you guys get in an accident and the airbag here deploys. Now my fancy seat belts here that are from Safety Restore, they obviously look fantastic. Um, I might send these out to them to see if they can fix them because if I'm not mistaken, once the plunger goes, or once the uh, the bomb, the actuator for the tensioner goes, you need to physically uh, replace the piece. Now I obviously can't do that, most people can't do that. I believe those guys can, I'll inquire about it, but as it stands, I'm considering these right now a loss even though they look really good on the interior of the car. Um, also from the interior, I need to take out the shift knob, shifter, this is a full cooler work short throw shifter. I need to take out the floor mats, that's not going to be anything crazy, and I think that's it. Now if the game plan with this car is to get rid of it and maybe find another Z, there's going to be a bunch of parts that I'm losing money out on. So my nice ceramic window tint, I obviously won't have anymore. My headlights, that got damaged, or at least the one got damaged in the accident, this one here seems to be okay. Um, my Mishimoto radiator, the upgraded full aluminum one, that I will not have. I need to get a replacement serpentine belt. I can't remember if I told you guys that yesterday, but I need a serpentine belt for all the accessory parts for the engine to work. Um, yeah, this sucks. I didn't realize how much I've actually installed on this car until you actually have to take it all off. And I couldn't even imagine doing like a full um, DIY, let's call it, of removing everything. I really don't wish this on anyone. This really sucks. And it's really sad knowing that all that time, you know, where you take care of the car, you wash it properly, you take care of the paint, you make it look good. And then one beer jumps out in front of your car, half a second later, the whole front end is ripped apart. And you're basically parting this out and you're back to square one. It sucks. But anyways, guys, I'm trying to keep my head up. I got a lot of work ahead of me still. Let's see what day number four has in store. What's happening guys? Okay, so we're back at it, or I was back at it. Today's day four. 
Um, I got a bunch of work done in the car today. So I was able to swap out the Z1 polyurethane engine mounts, the transmission mount. I was able to take off both headers. Those took a long time. Passenger side wasn't too bad. I was able to take all the bolts off from up top. For the passenger side, I was able to take, no, hold on, driver side, I was able to take most of them off from up top, but two of them had to be done from underneath. I also had to disconnect the steering column. And actually, now that I mentioned that, no, I didn't put that back in yet because I need to put my stock headers back in. However, those aftermarket parts are out. I removed my Optima yellow top battery that I installed on the car last year. Um, when it came to turning on the car after last winter, the car didn't want to start. So battery was dead, like dead, dead. I think it was like eight volts or something stupid low. There was no charging it to bring it back to life. So that's that. On the interior of the car, actually, let's back this up. So when I was doing the transmission mount, um, obviously I had it removed. I had the transmission supported by a jack. And while I had that out, I was able to get working on the shifter. So I took out the Cooler Work Short shifter. I have the standard one in there with a Tomei uh, shift knob. I'm not gonna lie, I actually don't mind it, but I mean, I don't have a cheaper one to throw in there as an alternative. So for now, that'll do. I swapped the OEM steering wheel back into it. So the Nismo one with the Alcantara is now gone. Yeah, that's that. I have a couple more parts to take out. Floor mats, not a hard job. That has to come out. The rear subframe collars from Z1, those I need to take out. And then the last part from the interior is going to be the RJM clutch pedal. Now I haven't sourced upper and lower intake manifolds, um, stock ones, because I would like to keep my ported ones because those took me about eight hours to port. Yeah, that took a while. I, I wouldn't mind keeping those considering, you know, the next person I don't think might appreciate this. Um, I really wish this didn't happen now with the whole deer situation and everything, but like, I really think that if I didn't have my other projects ongoing with my new house, my mini and my Civic, I would have time I would have time to fix this. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that I'm gonna be out of the Z game. I wanna find a Z, but now I wanna find the proper one. Now I still have a little bit of work to do to this. So as I mentioned, those other parts need to come out. I need to bleed the brakes. I need to install a stock uh, exhaust system on the car because right now there's nothing attached to the engine. I do have the stock intake system for this car. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna put it on yet, but I wanna make sure that this thing's up and running properly. Also, on the note of that, I replaced the serpentine belt, or actually, I added one because the one that I had in here got chewed up. So it's a continental full belt. I'm not gonna lie, it's a pain in the to change out. This tensioner here is super strong and super stiff. Yeah, it, it's not pleasant to do. So I, I can only imagine what this is like to change while it's in the car. If you don't have the little pin or a tool to lock both of these together, the job is going to be much more difficult to get this swapped. But you can kind of see the orientation of the belt. If you guys are interested in doing a serpentine belt swap, that's that's the orientation for it, right there. Anyways guys, let's see what tomorrow has in store for us. Okay, so I don't know what day we're at, but I've been working on the Z for a good amount and it is pretty much ready to be sold or you know, whatever I end up do deciding. So I have the car fired up right now. I have a garden hose feeding it with coolant. The engine is idling good. I had a little issue with the, uh, what is that, power steering pump. The pulley itself, like some of the, the teeth on it were kind of pushed in. So I had to use a hammer and a punch to kind of angle them back. Um, but it's running good. And I think I'm gonna put the car down on the ground, bring it outside and maybe take some good pictures of the car. But the VQ is pretty much fully back to stock. Um, the only part that I'm missing is the upper intake manifold. I have a lower one that I'm gonna be swapping onto the car because the one that I have on the car now is ported and it took me a good like seven to eight hours to fully port the upper and lower. So I kind of don't wanna just give those away to whoever ends up getting this car, but yeah, that's where we're at now. So I ended up taking the car outside to take some pictures so that I can make a for sale ad. As you can tell from the pictures, the car is gonna be sold in as is condition. The Z is drivable, but because I don't have a radiator on it with coolant circulating through the system, I can't turn it on and drive it to show the next owner that everything else is in good working order. The way that the Z sits now is going to be a great starting point for anyone that does want to modify or upgrade their car to potentially make it a track vehicle. Because I'm missing a hood, fenders, and a bunch of other parts, now is the great time to buy those upgrades. Because I didn't end up going through my insurance company, the title of the vehicle is still clean, which keeps the value of the vehicle high. If I were to have gone through insurance, they would brand the title, which would severely devalue it. 
I also took this video of the vehicle while the engine is running with a garden hose attached to the engine so that the engine could stay cool while the engine is running. You can see that the engine works, there's no real issues on the front end other than obviously the damaged components, but there's no real surprises with this car. This video will give whoever's interested in purchasing the vehicle a good idea as to what they're getting into before they come down to take a look at it or even buy it. Alright guys, so this is a very impromptu kind of last minute thing. So I had the Z posted up for sale, um, kind of pretty much as is, and I have a gentleman, Ryan, that came down to scoop it up. So pretty much in its broken as is condition, they took it, they're buying it, and I think this is where I'm gonna move on and find something else. But don't think that I'm done with the Z platform. It's been incredibly reliable to me. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing if I can find another one that is clean, low K, and something that I can enjoy, just like I did with that thing. Yeah. Now, I wasn't able to go through my insurance for multiple reasons. So the way that it works is that you have to pay your deductible. Then once that's done, you're going to have them basically appraise the car, see if it's going to be damaged, uh, fixed, written off, whatever. Um, and because we have almost 20 vehicles with our insurance, because it's not just my car under the insurance that I'm with. So if I were to make a claim with the Z, the premium for every other vehicle that we have on our fleet would all go up. So... I could, in theory, go through insurance and get the car completely covered. They'd give me the 30 Gs or whatever that the car is worth um, in a check. However, the problem with that is that over the next five years, I'll be paying that and more back to the insurance company. And over the course of seven to nine years, I could be paying back almost 50 grand. So it didn't make sense to go through insurance. The way that I see it is that I got, uh, I'll tell you guys right now, I got $13,500 for the car. And as is condition, I was able to keep all the modifications for myself. So that will maybe go towards the next Z. Um, but I'll be just taking the hit or the difference on that. So a $17,000 loss instead of a thirty to $50,000 loss. It still hurts. It still kind of sucks that, well... I'm losing that much, but um, maybe this is for the better. Um, I know that I have the Civic here to work on. I have the Mini to work on. And maybe it means that over the course of the winter, I'll be going hard with both of these cars. And maybe I'll find another Z or something. I've got my eyes open for another Z, but I haven't quite found anything yet. You never know. If you guys have one for sale or if you guys have a good lead on one, I'm looking for a Nismo V1. Let me know. Um, but yeah, guys, this is where this video ends. Unfortunately, the Z is gone down to two cars and we'll see we'll see where this goes. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Appreciate all the support and messages you guys have sent me after announcing that I uh, crashed the Z. Thank you guys for that. I appreciate it. I'm healthy. We're going to see if we can maybe dump some money into this thing, into the house and the Civic. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.